Welcome to another tutorial video from Tolomats. Make sure and subscribe for more. In this video, we're going to look at factorizing. We're going to look at the four ways of factorizing, uh, namely factorizing by a common term. Then we're going to look at the difference of two squares, then grouping, which is a form of factorizing, and finally quadratic equations. Uh, and we're going to look at two quadratic equations, one an introduction one and then a harder one, uh, just to get the hang of them. So let's get started here by factorizing with common terms. So here's our example, 4x squared minus 16xy, factorize. So first thing here I would do is there's two terms. I'm going to find something that's common to both of the terms. It can be numbers or letters. So let's focus in on the numbers first of all. Well, the two numbers are 4 and 16. What number can divide into 4 and 16? Well, you can divide them both by a 2, but you can go for a higher factor. You can go for a factor of 4. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factorize out the 4 from both terms. What's letter then is common to both terms well here i have an x squared which basically means x by x and here i have an x y so you can see that there is an x common to both of the terms so i'm going to factorize out just one of the x's i'm not factorizing out the x squared that's as much as i can factorize i'm then going to do my bracket and i'm going to put everything else into that bracket so what i would normally do here is i do my arrows to basically help me figure out what numbers go into the brackets. So first of all, here, I need to find out what goes in here to get to 4x squared. Well, 4 multiplied by 1 will get me to 4, and x multiplied by x will get me the x squared. So 4x multiplied by 1x will get me 4x squared. I then focus in on the sign between the two terms. It's a minus, so I need to put a minus in here. And now I need to figure out 4x multiplied by what will give me 16xy. Well, 4 by 4 will get me 16, and x by y will get me the xy. And that's it finished. I factorized by taking out common terms. And I've taken out the 4x uh, from both of the terms. So that's our first one done. Just actually before we move on from this one, I've just written down two terms. It could be three or four terms, as long as there's a common factor to each one of them. Here now we're going to look at the difference of two squares. So the answer to this is basically in, in its question. It's difference, meaning subtraction. Two squares means I must have numbers that are squared. Now, I don't have my numbers squared yet, but I can see that 25 can be changed to 5 squared and my 4 can change to 2 squared. So that becomes 2x all to be squared because 2x all to be squared basically means 2x by 2x which gets me to 4x squared. So only the x has been squared here, but not the 4. So that's why I needed to uh, do a little bit of work there. If you're unable to find the numbers that go into the brackets as the square, so we know that 2 twos is 4 and 5 fives are 25, but if you're unable to do it, we use our calculator, the button, which is the square root button, and that will get you your 5. Okay, next step is to draw two sets of brackets. And as you've probably learned, that you are now going to put a minus in one and a positive in the other. Doesn't matter which one the plus and the minus go into. Then it's straightforward. You put the 2x into both of them, and then you put the 5 into both of them. So I'm basically going to put my 2x here and my 2x. Then I'm going to put my 5 and my 5. And that is us finished. That is the difference of two squares. Now, if you want, just take a second here to uh, verify. So you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to verify my answer. So I'm going to make sure I'm right. So these two brackets, 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. If I multiply them out, it's first term by my second bracket. Another video on this if you need help on multiplying out brackets, but I'm just going to go with a little bit of pace here for this one. I just want you to see what you've done. I multiply uh, in my brackets, and I am getting uh, 2x by 2x, which is 4x squared, 2x by 5, which is 10x, minus 5 by 2x is minus 10x, minus 5 by positive 5 is minus 25. Now, this is what I just want you to see. See the positive 10x and the minus 10x? Positive 10 and negative 10 are zero, so they'll cancel out, which leaves me with 4x squared minus 25. And that 
is just me verifying the an my answer because that gets me back to this. So we're basically going in reverse with the difference of two squares. When we're factorizing, we're basically just taking something apart. Okay, that's factorizing uh, using difference of two squares. Let's move on to grouping. So basically, as the title says, we are gonna factorize, factorize these by putting them into groups. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the first two into a group and then I'm gonna put the second two into a group. And we're going back now to like our common terms on the first example, we're gonna take something out that's common. Now I'm looking at these and as I've grouped them, I can't actually get anything common with these two. There's nothing common there between 2x and, and 3y. And same on the last one here, all I can factorize out is just the x. But I've hit that stumbling block with the first one. I couldn't factorize anything out of here. So what we now do is I can rearrange them. There's nothing to stop me in maths putting things in an alternative order. So what I'm gonna do here basically is I'm gonna keep my 2x squared at the front. I'm gonna put this minus 3y at the back. So I'm gonna put plus 2x minus 3xy minus 3y. Same thing, I've just rearranged them. Now I'm gonna try group them again. I'm gonna group the first two and then I'm gonna group the second two. You can see with the first two, I can factorize now like my first example, as we said, I can take out a two and I can also take out an X and I draw my bracket. And what am I putting in the bracket? Well, again, use your arrows to help you. 2x by what gets me 2x squared? Well, it would be a 1x. And then I go to the back of my bracket. 2x by what gets me 2x is going to be a positive 1. So that's the first two terms dealt with. Now we're moving on to the last two terms. Now, just to help you here, don't focus in on the signs just yet. Just deal with the numbers. Forget about the two minuses. So what numbers and letters are common here? Well, I can see that I have a three that's common and I also have a Y that's common. So I'm gonna put down my factor. Then I'm gonna draw my bracket. And once again, use your arrows coming in to see what I have to multiply them by to get back to the original expression. So three Y multiplied by X gets me back to the three X squared, or sorry, the three X Y. And then three Y multiplied by what gets me back to three Y? Well, it must be just the number one. Okay, so they're my factors. Now I'm gonna focus in on the signs. Let's just try this out. So this is what you kind of do. You kind of just take a step back and try either a plus or a minus. Look what happens if I put a plus in here. So if I put a plus in here, I would multiply 3y by 1x and I get positive 3xy. Look up to the question. We want a negative 3y. So that's not going to work for me. So it's not going to be a positive outside the bracket. It's going to be a negative outside the bracket. So I'm going to change this here to a negative 3y. I've lost my 3. So it's a negative 3y. Now, when I multiply in my negative 3y by 1x, I'm getting negative 3xy. Let's see now what happens when I multiply in my second term. So if I was to put in a negative in the bracket, so again, this is just trialing at first, I would multiply minus 3y by minus 1, and that's giving me positive 3y. I don't want positive 3y, I want negative 3y. So what I'm gonna to have to do there is not put a negative inside the bracket, I'm gonna to have to put a positive inside the bracket. And now check it there yourself, uh, that minus 3y multiplied by positive one will get me minus 3y. So always deal with the numbers first, then worry about the signs. Another way of noticing it is that the numbers that go inside your bracket here must be the same. So if I put one X plus Y in one of them, my other factor must also be one X plus one. Okay, final step is we are now going to group them together or we're gonna put them as their factor. So I'm gonna put the two numbers that are outside of the brackets, the two X and the minus three Y together. So I'm putting them in a bracket. So two X minus three Y and then my factor of one X plus one. So that's the one that was already in the bracket. And that's factorizing by group. If you wanna check your answer, if you wanna verify your answer, all you have to do is multiply out these two brackets and you should get that answer. Once again, 
factorizing, you're going in this continuous circle of multiplying and factorizing. Okay, our next one is factorizing quadratic equations. Let's have now, there are many ways of factorizing quadratic equations. Uh, you can do it by trial and error, guide number, uh, your quadratic equation from your log tables. I've done up separate videos, one for your quadratic equation, your minus b formula from log tables. Guide number is a method as well, which I've explained separately. Here, we are going to use what's known as trial and error. We are just going to use our brute force to find the factors of our quadratic equation. Now, this introduction one here should be okay. So what I would always first of all do is draw out your brackets for your factors. Next thing I do is I'm getting numbers that multiply to x squared. Well, the only factors of x squared are x by x. So they're going into my brackets. x multiplied by x gives me x squared. Now, this is just a quick way of doing these ones. <clears throat> now, this method will only work when it's x squared, when the coefficient of the x squared is 1. When the number in front of the x squared is not a 1, this method here will not work. And we'll see it in the next example now in a second, how we would do those ones. But what I would do here is, you need to get the factors that multiply to 12. So what multiplies to 12? And those same two numbers must add to the middle number, the 7. So they must multiply to the constant and add to the coefficient of the x. So I'm just going to come out here and do a little bit of rough work and I'm going to find the factors of 12. Now the numbers that multiply to positive 12 are uh, 12 by 1. I can have 3 by 4 and I can have uh, 6 by 2. Now I can also have the negatives. I can have negative 12 by negative 1 which gives me a positive 12. I can have negative 3 by negative 4 gives me positive 12 and I can have negative 6 by negative 2. So there's six there that I'm listing out. So they're the multiples. I now have to see what they add to. So they've multiplied. Now let's see their addition. So I'm going to put a plus sign here. So when I add 12 and 1, I get 13. Don't forget, we are trying to get to 7. So I would basically be saying a no here. That one's not going to work. 3 plus 4 is giving me 7. So this one does work. So I'm going to put a plus here because I'm trying to get to a positive 7. 6 plus 2, 8. Not working for me. I need to get to 7. Let's just make sure, go through all of them. Minus 12 and minus 1 gives me negative 13. Uh, minus 3 and minus 7 here. And minus 6, take away 2, is minus 8. So none of these three will work. So the only one that's going to work for me is this one here. A positive 3 and a positive 4. So they're the two numbers that I'm putting into my brackets, 3 and 4. They're both positive, so I put in my plus. It doesn't matter if the 3 goes in the first bracket or the second bracket. They'll give you the same answers. If you ever want to just verify your answer, you don't need to do this, but I'm going to verify answer. You basically multiply out your brackets. So I take the first term, which is x, multiplied by the second bracket. Then I take the second term, multiplied by the second bracket and I multiply them in. Again, we're just going to go quick here. You have a separate video to uh, study up on multiplying in brackets, but that's giving me x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 12. Add these two and I get the common terms gives me 7x plus 2. And you can see that is basically what they gave us at the very start when they wanted us to factorize. So once again, factorizing, you're going in this continuous loop of factorizing and multiplication. We're going to look at one more factorizing of quadratic equations, but a harder question. So you can see that the only difference between this quadratic equation and the previous one is that there is now a coefficient in front of the x squared that is greater than 1. I've put a 2 here for this one. That's the only reason why we can't use our previous example here to help us. Minus b formula or your guide number would be very helpful here, but I'm just going to explain it using the trial and error with the brackets method for those that want to see it. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to get the factors of minus 3. We're going to get the numbers that multiply to negative 3. So they can be, uh, let's go through them, we can have negative uh, 1 multiplied by positive 3, which is the same, don't forget, as 
um, negative one multiplied by, or sorry, what am I saying? Rub that out, my fault, which is the same as <clears throat> one multiplied by negative three. They're the same thing. I've just written them uh, with the minus in front of the opposites. I could also have negative three multiplied by a positive one, which is again, giving me minus three, but it's just a way of written them down. It's commutative here for multiplication. And I could also have, uh, I could also have three multiplied by negative one. So see how they are all multiplying to minus three, <clears throat> but I've written them in different orders. So we have four ways of writing the same thing there. So when I come over to my two brackets now, we need to test them all out, unfortunately. So I'm gonna draw my two brackets. First thing I should do is, I'm trying to get the numbers that multiply to two x squared. Well now, the factors of two are two and one, so it must be a two followed by a one, or one and two, it doesn't matter which bracket, and an x and an x. So two x multiplied by one x is giving me two x squared. So that's the first part. Now we basically take my four possible solutions up above and I test them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sub in my minus one followed by my positive three. And what I'm trying to do now is to get to the positive five in front of the x, the coefficient of the x. But like above, I couldn't use the method where they add to the five because of the two in front of the x squared. So that's why once again, this method is slightly different. A quick way of checking if you're right, this is what I would do with these ones. I would draw, um, just draw like this V shape underneath. So I'm going from the two X to the three and the minus one to the one. So this is a quick way of checking it rather than go multiplying it out. So what happens when I multiply the one X by the one, or sorry, the one X by the minus one, I get negative one X. And when I multiply the two X now by the three, I get a positive, 6x. And I do my little sum. What happens now when I go minus 1x plus 6x, I get 5x. And if I come back up to my quadratic equation here, you can see that the 5x here is in the center. So I know that I'm right. So the aim here is what you should always try and do. You get the factors that will multiply to the negative 3 but when you do this little sort of V shape here, you have to get the five X here in the center. Now you could see, I'm just gonna do it out again, just so you can see that it's, it could be wrong another way. So let's say I picked, so these two are right, weren't they? Imagine I picked uh, this group here. So the one and the minus three. So if I put positive one in here and I put in negative three, I draw my arrows coming down to test it. I'm going to multiply the two X by the minus three and I get minus six X. And then I'm going to multiply the positive one by the positive two X. And that's giving me positive two X. I add two X minus six X and I get negative four X. And you can hopefully see that my four X or minus four X is not what we wanted. So that's why this method here will not work. So, Bit of work involved in this one, but it is by trial and error. With practice, you'll be able to spot a lot, of, a lot of this in your head. Hope they help, but there are four types of factorizing. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.